everybody. Thank you for attending my talk. Um, I also want to thank all the sponsors and the attendees and all of the organizers for putting a really great show on. This has been pretty fantastic. Um, my name is Brandon Goodell. I work pseudonymously at Monero Research Lab as Saray Noether, uh, which does not mean no ether. Uh, we are a research group focused on Monero and CryptoNote. Uh, in particular, uh, we're interested in trust minimizing applications in finance. Uh, as some of you know, uh, Monero is a privacy focused cryptocurrency that is not a fork of Bitcoin. Uh, in that sense, it's a little more similar to Zcash, but we are a very, very different animal. And in the taxonomy of privacy coins, uh, we are sort of a standalone creature, at least the CryptoNote protocol is. Uh, the reason that we focus on privacy at Monero is because privacy should be regarded as a human right. And it's very important that business competitors have the right to hide their business activity from their competitors. And it's important that citizens of tyrannical nations should be able to purchase banned books. So these images that we get of the darknet individuals who, who buy drugs online or tiger babies or grenades, it's not exactly why we do it here at Monero. Um, some of the improvements that we've had at Monero Research Lab over the past couple of years involve, for example, bulletproof range proofs. Uh, these were introduced by Benedict Boons and, his, uh, and a couple of other researchers uh, at Stanford. I believe Jonathan Boodle was involved. Um, and when we, we were the first coin to really develop it, and we were able to get like 99 plus percent improvements in speed uh, with our impl implementation. So like, we're very, very interested in uh, generally pushing the boundaries of how a secure crypto system can work. Um, today, I want to talk about how to make Monero harder, better, faster, and stronger. You may have noticed that the title has changed a little bit. Initially, it was harder, better, faster, smaller. And I combined smaller with faster. Um, so first, I'm going to begin with how we are interested in making Monero harder. And by that, I mean, specifically, we want to know how to prevent cryptographic breaks. There are a bunch of little pieces that fit together to make all of Monero's ring confidential transactions work. Uh, and we are interested in making sure that each of those components is as strong as possible. Um, so for example, our ring signatures are computationally unforgeable. And our Peterson commitments that we use to hide range proofs are uh, computationally binding. Um, unfortunately. This means that a, ma a malicious party can use a quantum computer to either forge a signature or lie about transaction amounts. And of course, quantum computers are quite far off. It's not exactly going to be right around the corner, but it is something to keep in mind for our design philosophy as we move forward. So there's an obvious solution here, which is to replace discrete logarithm-based signatures with other uh, settings that are more strong. By the way, oh. Great. I had a mistake in my slide, and it's been fixed. Um, so for example, ring learning with errors, RLWE instead of discrete logarithms, discrete uh, DL, um, that's one way that we can try to move forward towards a post-quantum future. Um, there's a trade-off with RLWE uh, settings, which is that even though things seem to move blazingly fast, signatures and keys are really, really massive. So. Making a move in that direction has consequences for our blockchain. Uh, another solution to making Monero harder would be to stop using our ranged proofs, uh, as we currently do with our Peterson commitments, start using switch commitments. Switch commitments were written by Tim Ruffing and uh, I forget the first name, Malavolta, uh, about a year and a half ago. And, uh, it, or two years ago. And the idea behind switch commitments is to build in an emergency dead man switch to your crypto scheme so that if quantum computers suddenly show up on the scene, you can go fall back from a nice computationally binding but perfectly hiding scheme, and you can fall back towards something that's called everlastingly binding but computationally hiding. So this way, if we did this, whoops. Uh, if we did this, um, then the quantum computer would no longer be able to lie about transaction amounts, which is a really good thing, because you don't want to send negative $5 <laughs> to somebody else. That's, that's kind of like in contradiction to the push-only system of cryptocurrencies. Um, 
yeah, so, yeah. Sorry, I lost my train of thought. Um, so another way that we can make Monero better, uh, by better I mean making Monero better as a transaction network. That's the next step. Um, uh, if, and by this I mean something like the Lightning Network, something that we can do off-chain scaling, because if we can start doing that, then we can start expanding uh, off-chain. And chains are expensive, blockchains are expensive. Um, one example of this, and actually I want to thank Andrew Polster for bringing this up to me the other day, is that if you have a change or refund model built into your transaction structures, then you can use that sort of as a primitive for building an enormous number of really useful applications. Things that are like on the border of smart contracts, um, uh, cross-chain swaps, things like that, right? Um, but unfortunately, Monero has no native support for change or refund transactions. So the obvious solution is to bring change or refund transactions to Monero. In Bitcoin, it's really easy to construct a transaction that says address X has until block height H, and then after that point, either X or Y can spend, right? This is not something that's built into Monero. Um, the solution right now would be, uh, well, there are actually many solutions to the change or refund system. Uh, I wrote a paper about a year ago that uh, is called Thring Signatures, which was supposed to be a clever play on threshold ring signatures. So we have Thring 1 and Thring 2. Um, but uh, if you use threshold signatures, you can do, start the beginning of these like change or refund structures. So that's one way that you can attack this problem. Another way um, is to do a more native solution where we can bake into the Monero protocol a dual recipient output structure. And this is another paper that I'm working on right now, thanks to uh, a pseudonymous contributor to the Monero Research Lab who is in attendance at this conference, but I'm not sure if he wants us uh, to be speaking about who he is. So uh, next up would be faster. How can we make Monero faster? Our current ring signature scheme is called MLSAG. It was invented by another pseudonymous contributor to Monero Research Lab a couple of years ago for ring confidential transactions. Um, unfortunately, these signatures are a little big. They take two, if you want to sign a ring of seven people, then you're going to have 15 scalers and a group element. If you want to sign a ring for 20 people, you're going to have uh, let's see here, 41 scalars and a group element, right? Um, it doubles the ring size, essentially. Uh, and no matter what, you have to spend the time to verify that signature for every single uh, little piece of information that's included in the signature. So this might not mean much to the people in the room here right now, just on its own, but uh, contributor Random Run to the Monero Research Lab, he, he realized that we could cut this in half, basically. Um, we were using too many scalars, uh, more than we needed. Um, and he came up with a signature scheme that requires n plus 1 scalars and two group elements, which is really great. Um, and it has the same asymptotic verification time. So it's smaller, about the same speed, right? So why is this on the faster slide? It turns out that the verification time in practice is actually better with this new scheme. And in fact, this scheme has like a 15%, 15 to 20% improvement both on space and time, verification time and signature space, which means two years from now, the Monero blockchain is going to be much, much smaller than it needs to, or than it would have been if we had not made this change. So these are compact signature, compact ring signatures that we're going to be describing in an upcoming paper very soon. Overall, download plus sync, much wow. Um, so one of the side benefits of this signature scheme, though, and I'm actually pretty proud of this, another contributor named Sarang, uh, he and I noticed that we can do colored coin transactions in Monero using this scheme, and it doesn't really increase the size of the signatures. And in fact, uh, if we have n plus 1 signatures, I'll be able to use n plus, or n plus 1 scalars to describe a signature. I'll be able to use n plus 1 sig scalars to describe a signature regardless of the number of colors in the transaction. So it removes uh, the, the dependency on the number of colors in the transaction from the scalar part of the signature size, um, which, again, it's kind of pretty amazing that we can get something that is almost as fast uh, if we have two colors embedded into the Monero signature scheme than if we only have one. And our signature sizes will still get smaller. So technically, we could move to a Monero gold and Monero silver if we wanted to. We won't, but 
Well, maybe we will. Who knows? Uh, lastly, harder, better, faster, stronger. Uh, how can we make Monero stronger against tracing analysis? Uh, raise your hand if you saw the paper that was just announced, I think, two days ago about tracing analysis in Monero and the flooding transactions. OK. A couple of people have heard about this. So this is something that I've been studying for a couple of years. And uh, there are some major flaws in that paper, but uh, the, the authors noticed that if you flood the Monero transaction or Monero network with a, a whole bunch of transactions and you control a whole bunch of outputs, then if somebody uses your outputs in a ring signature, you can tell that you didn't sign it. So you can reduce the effective ring size by flooding the network. Of course, this is expensive. Well, it's a little exp It's actually not very expensive at all because our fees are so low because bulletproofs. Um, but uh, what's beneficial about <laughs> this particular thing is that the effectiveness of the attack goes down as the number of attackers goes up. And if nobody's attacking, it's really cheap to attack. So below a certain threshold of attack rate, you have attackers who are incentivized to attack. So they start flooding the network. And then above a certain rate, it's too expensive to keep doing that. And so they stop. And you have this nice equilibrium. Up here, everybody stops. And down here, everybody keeps attacking. What ends up happening is that things balance out. The effectiveness of any one attacker is canceled out by all the other attackers. Um, and this can drive things into a bidding war. Now, none of this is on this slide, because I just read this paper right before coming to the conference, and I wrote this talk a week or two ago. Other ways that we can make Monero stronger with respect to tracing analysis, uh, well, the, the unfortunate part about the Monero blockchain, and this is something that uh, the Zcash blockchain does not necessarily have to deal with, but they still have to deal with it, just in a different scale, is that you can use heuristic linking between transactions. I can say, if one of these 11 ring members must have been the spender, it's probably the most recent one, right? This is the Monero link heuristic from a couple of years ago, the guess first heuristic. Um, the problem is, is that you can use these heuristics to develop models, and you can then use statistical models of the transaction history. And these estimators are really f very quickly computable, and they're parallelizable. So somebody can just generate guesses, uh, guess after guess after guess, of what the true transaction history is in Monero um, very, very quickly. Uh, and making ring sizes bigger without really having any idea of when to stop, it's kind of impractical. Right, because we could just drive up the size of our blockchain like crazy without actually having an impact. Um, so, luckily though, it turns out that even like the best systems that use the biggest anonym anonymity sets are still vulnerable to heuristic linking. There was a paper that came out, uh, I think, a year and a half ago by Jeffrey Quesnel or Quesnel um, on how to do linking on something like the Zcash blockchain. And I've been applying this MLE, the ma like maximum likelihood estimate approach, to a model that takes into account either the Zcash blockchain or the Monero blockchain. And I've been trying to figure out how to quantify when to stop increasing ring size. Because we could just keep bo boosting ring sizes until our anonymity set sizes are almost the size of the, in you know, the entire blockchain, like Zcash. Um, but should we really be doing that, especially if the verification time requires touching every single key. Um, another way that we can help fix this problem, uh, th this is like the naive way, is to start getting ring signatures that are not linearly sized in this number of signers. Okay? And so earlier today, earlier a, a slide or two ago, when I was discussing the verification time is O of 2n, uh, the signature size was like n plus 1 scalars. Here, I'm talking about uh, instead of n plus 1 scalars, we would have log n scalars to describe our signature sizes. So in the end, there's a couple of ways that we can tackle uh, the problem of making Monero stronger. Um, one of the, eventually, we're going to have to start figuring out when to stop increasing our ring signature sizes. We're going to have to cram sublinear ring signatures into Monero. And we need to make them fast enough to verify that we don't drag down the whole network. 
So here's the thing. This is the real problem. A sublinear size ring signature has logarithmic size, but you still have a linear amount of time to verify it. And so this leads to an exponential trade-off between space and time. And there's the space-time continuum in the Monero community is sort of a source of a continual source of joking. Um, there may be some other ways to improve Monero to make it stronger against tracing analysis. Um, for example, there's a, there's a system that is being described called Lilantis right now. The whole idea behind Lilantis, which, by the way, is it has some problems with it, but it's a really interesting idea, which is to take the a whole ring confidential transaction and shove it inside of a bulletproof. And bulletproofs are fast, right? We had like a 99% increase in speed. Um, unfortunately, there is at least one trick that they pull off in the Lantis for batching purposes that makes me really nervous. And so I haven't really like, gotten too far into making any proposals in that regard. But there's another idea that I had that I'm really looking into and I'm hoping I can figure out soon, which is if somebody publishes a ring signature with, say, 2,000 members in it, which is absurd. We've seen 4,000 ring signature, 4,000 member ring signatures, I think, on Monero before. Just one or two. It's like a, it's like somebody wanted to break the record. Um, but if somebody was going to be publishing a 2,048 ring member signature or 1,024 ring member signature, shouldn't somebody be able to just reveal a key image from that big set and be like, "I'm also a member of this set. You already verified this signature." you don't have to verify it again. Here's my new key image. And that way you can avoid the double spending and avoid spe burning the time verifying it again. And then maybe we can get around the space-time trade-off. Um, but that's uh, an active area of research, and we haven't really gotten too far into that. Um, however, uh, this June in Denver, Colorado, uh, there is going to be a speaker at the Monero conference um, who's going to be discussing at least one method of doing something like this. Um, and so uh, I don't want to give anything away in that regard, but I, I'm very excited to hear that talk. Um, so harder, better, faster, stronger. I had to include Daft Punk. That's all I had. Thank you very much. Thank you.